the, the project is um, focused on trying to find explanations for the very sustained decline in inequality in Latin America, particularly over the last decade. Um, in the majority of Latin American countries, um, inequality has declined um, on consistently since around 2000, 2002. Uh, and in some countries like Brazil, it has declined by a significant amount, as 10% if you measure it in terms of the Gini coefficient over a period of 10 years. Um, it would be an understatement to say that this decline in inequality has taken everyone by surprise, including Latin Americans. Because if you look at the previous uh, 50, 60 years, where wh whatever we have data, it has shown that inequality had been increasing all the while. So it has been pretty surprising. And what the project does is to look for um, potential explanations for the decline of inequality in the region, to try to understand uh, what are Latin Americans doing different uh, now than they, they used to? What, what is change in terms of the, is, is it changes in the structure of the economy, the structure of society, the kind of opportunities that people have? There is a very excellent study about uh, Noralastic and she's got the whole project looking at different countries. And Sintali, she's also contributing to this book. Um, she reckons that education has a really important role to play especially the interaction between education and labor markets. The kind of, the, the, the returns to skilled labor in Latin America have been falling, partly because the supply of skilled labor has been rising. And so that generates a tendency towards uh, equality. Um, the, the other issue uh, which um, Andrea Cornia, who is the main lead on this, on this project, the, the, the other issue that he raises is, is fiscal stabilization. Uh, what he finds really different about Latin American economies and, and the way governments run the economy is that they have uh, st stuck to pre pretty good fiscal rules that have prevented uh, you know, the increased inflation, increasing inflation and so on that affect the poor adversely. So I think th those, those factors are important. Uh, the, the, kind of, the dimension that I'm particularly interested in is the role of social policy because um, the, uh, there has been a, a, a kind of a, 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 a change of a degree type in terms of the, the kind of social policies that Latin American governments have introduced uh, in the last uh, in the last 15 years or so, and I think that the changes in social policy have have had an impact on uh, opportunities more widely in society, um, and they have improved the. Um, position of low-income groups and particularly informal workers. They have strengthened their capacity to be productive. And, and all that has rebounded on, on, on inequality. Because in terms of international policy discussions, um, there is a lot of interest on uh, conditional cash transfer programs, which um, in my view should be called human development cash transfer programs because they aim to improve the kind of human capital, particularly of children. Uh, but th there is also a range of other types of social policies, improvements in health um, care, improvements in education, um, improvements in um, um, support for um, older people and particularly children. Um, um, in, all, all those have had the, the effect of improving the opportunities of the, particularly the younger cohorts as they join the, the labour market. In some countries, you can actually point to specific events, uh, specific moments that uh, can give you an insight into these social contracts. Uh, Brazil is a really interesting case. Um, they had 20 years of dictatorship up to 1985. Um, um, when when uh, uh, democracy was restored, there was uh, an agreement within the country for most sectors that they need a new social contract. They organized a, constitu a constituent assembly, um, and in 1980, in 1988, they had a new constitution. The new constitution established the principle that people have uh, a, a right to social protection. They have a right to uh, an adequate level of health care and education, for example. Um, and that, um, over the next kind of five years, um, initiated uh, a lot of kind of policy developments. Uh, the big, the big change in my, from my perspective is this: that uh, the the constitution says 
the government is responsible for poverty in this country, right? And these are the rights. So it's, it's a, it's a rights-based approach. Uh, there is a level of responsibility and accountability on the part of government. I, I think that a similar process is taking place in other developing countries um, and, and also in Latin America. I mean, I guess um, outside the region, you could point to Korea after the 1997 crisis, South Africa after the fall of apartheid. So you have these kind of moments that give you an insight into this. Uh, most other Latin American countries have done this, but it, it's a much more gradual and perhaps less directly observable um, um, way. But nonetheless, it's there. And you know, the turn to the left, as, as, as people describe it in Latin America, is perhaps a, re a reflection of that. If you look at the uh, budgets that um, human development cash transfer programs um, absorb in Latin America, they are, they are very small relative to GDP. So that, for example, Brazil's um, um, Bolsa Familia or Mexico's Oportunidades take only 0.5% of uh, GDP. Um, so they, they are very effective for the kind of res resources that are put into them. And I think that that will be a lesson for countries in Africa. Um, let me tell you that many countries in Africa spend much more than 0.5% of GDP in anti-poverty programs. Um, if you include, for example, uh, aid, um, um, aid funding, um, um, Malawi, for example, spends about 4.1% on anti-poverty transfer programs. Ethiopia, about the same amount. It's, remember, it's about eight times uh, the kind of budget of Bosa Familia. Of course, GDPs are, 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 a lot, are, are smaller in Africa. So I, I don't think the issue is, 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 is financial. The issue, from my perspective, is much more political, in the sense that there is no um, uh, consensus around the view that governments should address poverty reduction. For, for a number of reasons, I mean, um, aid hasn't been very helpful. Um, many kind of uh, policymakers have, uh, as it were, exported poverty reduction. Uh, it has become the, um, the role of donors to do poverty reduction in Africa rather than the, the role of governments. Um, and, and I think that um, some uh, for types of political regimes in Africa also militate against um, a, a strong um, and drive in terms of anti-poverty reduction. So I, I, thi I think that they are feasible, uh, and I think the, 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 the issue is much more a political one. I have, over time, collaborated with uh, a number of uh, UN agencies and, and bilaterals. Uh, it seems to me that what um, is, is um, different about my collaboration with, uh, with you know, wider is the kind of focus on research, first of all and the kind of openness in terms of the, the policy agendas. Uh, I think um, if you look at the output of uh, Unowider over a period of time, you'll see contributions that have been made on, 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 on a, a range of relevant areas, which I mean in most other um, UN agencies, I guess, even, even when you look just at the research departments or the, 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 the research focus um, parts of the UN, uh, you don't have that kind of that coverage of different different issues. The other point that is really important is that there is a uh, there is a sense in in um, you know why the work um, to bring together um, basically researchers working on developing countries in the south um, and and to to create networks and collaborations that would that would lead to kind of cross-fertilization of research across regions. Um, I mean, for example, the DFID rarely supports any work on, Lat on Latin America because they are focused on low-income countries. Yeah. And, and if you look at all the different agencies, they all have a, a different take on this. So I think the, 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 the fact that you have this kind of wide network of collaboration across the South is really important.